welcome back to our channel it's josh and mia and today we're going to talk about all about the usual property jargon you're going to hear all the time when investing in property and also equations equations that you will use all the time as well when buying yeah. an investment these were a few things we had to come to grips with pretty quick so we thought we'd just do a quick video to help take you through some so you can feel confident going in talking to the professionals and working out great deals for yourself exactly so guys don't forget uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe we hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned throughout the whole video there's going to be a lot of interesting things you're going to need to know and we hope you enjoy and guys just one thing i want to mention before we go in we are going to talk about a lot of property equations and jargon and all of these are included in our ebook if you want to buy it should be coming up there all of that is in there and more to really help you understand the property game and investing game as a wider whole <laughs> Okay guys, so the first sort of jargon or definition I'm gonna talk you through is leasehold. This was one thing before me and Josh got into property, I wasn't really sure about what leasehold and freehold was, so I thought it'd be a good thing to include. If you're trying to buy a property leasehold, it kind of just means you're leasing it from the actual owner. You yeah. don't actually own the property outright. You're mm. basically almost renting, leasing it from them for a number of years, and the freeholder is still the one who actually owns it. Exactly. and. Uh that um, goes on nicely to the next one, which is gonna be freehold. Yeah. Um, so freehold, very simple. It means you completely own that property and the land it sits on. Yeah. Okay, guys, so another thing that is quite essential to understand is what a mortgage is. So some of our friends even now are a bit unsure on what a mortgage is or does. A mortgage, to put in the most simple terms, is simply a loan from the bank that can only apply when you're buying a property. So this will be in comparison to how much the property is worth, how much deposit you have, and you go to people, mortgage advisors, to help you find the best mortgage for you that would work for you and the property you're wanting to buy. Exactly. So guys, let's move on to the next one, which is gonna be remortgaging. Now, this is a very important point. Um, if you're investing in property, this will be probably your best friend yeah. when in the property game. So a remortgage is simply where you take out a new mortgage on the property you already own. Now this can either be to replace your existing mortgage or to borrow money against that property. So mm -hmm. let's go a bit more in depth and just clarify that. So a remortgage essentially you're taking money, your equity, uh, the funds that you put in that property, so that could be the deposit um, and the value that it increases by. So if you put down a deposit of 20,000, which should be somewhere around here, and uh, the property grew by another 10,000, that's your equity. So you'd pull out that 30,000 pounds, that would be the remortgage, that would be your new loan, okay? And you can use that to recycle that money and put that as a deposit into another property. And guys, it's actually a fact that a third of homes in the UK are actually remortgages. So this is quite, quite interesting because of course, you know, it shows that the private sector is really stepping up. Yeah, another thing about remortgages is you could have to wait two years, six months, it varies. But this is a really good thing to get to grips with if you want to go into property. Exactly. Okay guys, the next one is definitely something you're going to have to know if you want to be a landlord yourself. And it's really simple, buy to let. All buy to let means is that you're purchasing a property with no intention of living in it yourself, but merely to rent it out to others and have tenants in it. It's really simple to understand. There are separate mortgages specifically for buy to let, and we'll probably get into different mortgage products further down the line. But buy to lets can come in different forms, such as a single let, multi let, or HMO. All of those are different strategies, which we will go into in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that. Well said. So guys, let's move on to our next point here, which is LTV, which is loan to value. Uh, simply all that is, is the ratio of a loan uh, to the value of an asset uh, that was purchased. And this is a commonly a term used by banks, uh, which are the lenders. And you're gonna need to know this when obviously obtaining a mortgage. Yeah. So the numbers will pop up somewhere on the screen. Uh, but let's say you, uh, the value of the property is £100,000, yeah. uh, the deposit is £20,000, you've got a mortgage of 80000 so you take that mortgage, which is 80000 divide that by the value of the property, which is 100000 that will give you 0 0.8, times that by 100 to get that as a percentage, and that's an 80% loan-to-value ratio. 
Yep, so all these percentages we're gonna talk about is exactly how you figured them out in school. Get your numbers, times them by 100, and that's what your final percentage will be. Exactly. Okay, so the next one is joint venture. We thought we'd define it here for you, even though it is technically a strategy because you may not understand quite what it entails in the property industry. So a joint venture is basically when you go into business with another person to purchase a property or develop it. Yeah. Now, this can come in different forms depending on you and your partner or partners. Mm -hmm. So, like, if we did it, we could put in no money, but we do all the work, all the research, all the negotiations and bring the knowledge and our partner brings the investment and we would work out how much of a percentage each of you got for the property so we could get 30% ownership, they get 70. So each month we would get 30% of the profit. Yeah. Or you could go in, join, both put in 50 grand each, split it 50-50. There's different ways to do this and it will 100% depend on you and your partners and what your preferences are. Exactly. So the next one is cash buyers. It's very really simple and easy to understand. Simply all you're doing is buying that property for cash, meaning that there will be no mortgage at all on it. Uh, you'll stumble on this quite a lot when going on platforms such as Zoopla and Rightmove all the time. People are always looking for cash buyers. Yeah, so kind of linked to that is no chain. What no chain means is the person who's selling their house doesn't want you to have to be waiting for your house to sell to buy theirs. Exactly. So it kind of means you're like caught up in a chain of events. That's mm -hmm. kind of how I make sense of it in my head. So if they don't want any chain, it means that they want you to be able to there and then when you make your offer, have the deposit ready, have the mortgage ready and be able to go through with it, not having to wait on an old property to sell to then follow through. So cash buyer, no chain kind of link. In a sense, if you're a cash buyer, there would be no chain anyway. Okay guys, so onto the fun bit, the maths. We know this bit you've all been looking forward to. <laughs> it is kind of hard to just explain mathematical equations out into the air without like a teacher's whiteboard. Um, well, we do have a teacher's whiteboard, but that wouldn't look good if we were writing on it. But we are gonna have some numbers behind us going through bit by bit what we're saying. So hopefully you can follow along and really understand the equations rather than just listening to us babble a bunch of numbers, it will be there to make it super clear. Exactly. Guys, let's talk about the first equation uh, you're gonna love, you hear it all the time, ROI, your return on investment. Uh, so simply all that is, is the profit divided by the cost of the investment. Now, before I go on, uh, the cost of investment, what does that mean? So it also can mean not only the deposit, but also any further works uh, so the total money that you put in for that investment. Uh, so let's say you've done a refurbishment on the bathroom and the kitchen, that's the, all the funds that you use for that uh, investment. So uh, the return on investment, let's say that you have 5,000 pounds profit, okay? And the cost of the investment was, let's say 45,000 uh, pounds. It will be 5,000 divided by 45,000 and you times that by 100, that will give you a 11% return on investment. And guys, that is extremely good. If you go to any uh, bank and you just take out a normal ISA, you know, junior ISAs you got, that pays you like sometimes one to 3% if you're lucky yeah. uh, interest on that, which is compared to um, a property and you've got a return on investment of 11%. I mean, that is extremely good long term. Yeah, basically it's just making your money start working for you rather than just sitting there. Exactly. Okay guys, so the next one is a really important one to know when figuring out your numbers, either as a deal sourcer or investor, and you really need to know this to make sure you understand how much you're gonna be making a month, and your cash flow, and eventually your return on investment. This is kind of the key that holds it all together. Yeah. So it sounds simple, but when me and Josh first started out a few years ago, we kind of made a simple mistake, which I think a lot of other people would fall into. So this is a really good thing to know, and it is merely working out your rental income. Now you have that in three types, weekly, monthly, and annually. So say if you know you, you're gonna charge 100 pounds a week, so easy numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's just, you know, that's what you wanna charge on that property per week. Now, I think a lot of people, as we did a few years ago when we were looking at properties, maybe for ourselves, um, we just times that by four to find our monthly income. 
but we quickly found out that is not the right way to do it because basically there's not always four exact weeks in a month. Exactly. So just mm -hmm. timesing it by four isn't going to give you an accurate monthly figure. So what you're actually going to do, I hope this is all going on behind me to keep track, is take your £100 you're making per week, times it by 52. That means there's 52 weeks in the year. So you're going to times 100 by 52 and that's gonna give you 5,200. That is your yearly rental income. Sorry, Josh's hand gestures are throwing me off. <laughs> I'm trying to do my mental maths. So that is your yearly rental income is 5,200. Now, to figure out your monthly income, you're gonna divide that by 12, because obviously there's 12 months in a year. I'd hope you guys would know that, but just making sure. So you take your 5,200 and divide it by 12, and that would be £433.33 pence per month. So that's how you've got your weekly, your monthly, and your annual rental income. And using those numbers, you can go off and figure out the other equations. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so let's talk about the next one here, which is such a lovely word when talking about property and investment. It's gonna be yield. Uh, this basically shows you how hard your money is actually working for you. Um, so let's move on to that now. So the equation for yield, that's your annual rental income yep. divided by the purchase price of the property. So let's just get very clear here. Uh, the purchase price is not just the deposit, it's literally the price that you bought the property at. So it was a 25, uh, sorry, £20,000 deposit I put on the property. It's £80,000 mortgage on there. That's 100000 That's your purchase price price yeah so let's get into that equation so uh, let's say your annual rental income is seven thousand pounds we will divide that by the purchase price like I said that's a hundred thousand pounds which will be here somewhere and uh, times that by a hundred that will give you seven percent uh, yield mm -hmm. and remember guys uh, as we said in the previous video um, as a rule of thumb that a lot of investors like to live by, if you've got 7% or higher yield, yeah. this is really good. It, you know, your money is working for you very well in that property. And this is also a good indicator when looking at areas to invest in. If you just go online and talk about the average yield in certain areas of the UK, you will see that actually London compared to other areas outside of London have high yield. So this is a good indicator to know where to invest should you be interested in investing in property okay guys the next thing we're going to go over is cash flow now you're going to want to know your monthly and annual cash flow especially if you're using property to replace your regular income you're going to want to know what you're getting on a monthly basis coming in so to work out monthly cash flow it's really simple all you do is take your incomings that month and subtract your expenses that month so say you get £700 of rental income, which you would have figured out before from your other equations, and you're spending £350 a month, let's say 300 on a mortgage, 50 on a little rainy day fund mm -hmm. to make sure you have a pot there, to make sure you can, if a boiler breaks or a lighting fixture goes, you have a little rainy day fund to make sure you can pay that off. So you're simply gonna take the 350 away from the 700 and that leaves you with 350 pounds cash flow per month. Really easy, all you have to do to work out your annual cash flow is times that by 12. So 350 times by 12 would be 4,200 pounds annual cash flow. So it may not seem like really big numbers, but when you think about it, that's really for you doing nothing. All you do is let someone live in your house and you're getting 4,200 pounds clean cash. So that's a really good thing to know when you're looking at what sort of properties you wanna invest in. Okay guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it didn't keep you for too long. Uh, we're gonna be back with some more videos. Uh, we're also gonna be doing some views in the future as well. We've got a lot of content coming your way yeah. and we're really, really excited to show you guys what that's all going to be about. Yeah, so if you wanna know about a few more strategies of how you can invest and put these equations and jargon to good use, that's all coming up tomorrow. Exactly, so guys, don't forget to also hit the like button and subscribe down below. Check our ebook, we've got free ebooks as well for you on your property journey and your investing journey as well.